Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm super excited to share with you a brand new way for you to take form data and display it on the next page in Webflow. You may recall we had a previous example of how to implement this, but this time we're going to do it using the new Xano JavaScript SDK. It's going to be a much simpler implementation, and I'm super excited to show it to you today. So let's take a look at our Webflow site. You can see we have a very simple layout with just a name and an email field. Let's go ahead and fill this out and see what happens. I'm going to say my name is Chris and my email is chris at email.com. And when we submit this, you can see we're taken to another page and we are shown our name, the email, and this number 22. If we hop over to Xano, and we actually refresh our database, you can see we have a record ID of 22. So what's happening is Webflow is taking that form data, we're sending it to Xano, and we are storing it in our Xano database. At the same time, we are taking this record ID of 22, and we are storing that in the browser's local storage. And then finally, we are redirecting the user to this new success page, which will then take that ID that is stored in local storage and call a new Xano API to retrieve this record again. So taking a look at our custom code, the first line of our code is just getting that Xano SDK. You don't have to worry about hosting this or anything. We take care of that for you. The next few lines of code are actually just defining the new Xano client, which is required to use the SDK, which includes our API group base URL, which if we go back into Xano, we actually get that right here from the API groups page. The next few lines of code are just looking for our form inside of the page, and then finally looking for the submit button inside of that form. The next two lines right here are actually stopping Webflow's default handling of the form. And then finally, we have our brand new Xano post function, which we are redirecting to our Webflow endpoint. And then we are defining the fields in our form. So we have our name and our email, uh, just using uh, get elements by name. And then when we get a response from this endpoint, we are first logging this to the console just for development purposes. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. We are setting the ID from the response in the ID field of our local storage, so we can use that on the next page. And then finally, we are redirecting the customer to the success page. So let's actually take a look at the next page, and we will see what that code is doing. So on the next page, again, we are calling the Xano JavaScript SDK. We are defining our new Xano clients with that API group base URL. And then what we're doing is we are just telling the code, hey, I want you to execute this next function as soon as the page loads. So after that, we use xano.git and we give our slash Webflow endpoint and we just append the local storage.id to that URL. And once we have a response, we actually look for the elements on our page that match the IDs of name, email, and record ID. And then we just populate that with the data from the API response. And that's it. It's very simple. Now let's take a look at these API endpoints in Xano so you can see exactly what they're doing. The first endpoint that we're calling, this is the endpoint that's adding something new to our database. So when we fill out the form and click submit, this is the API endpoint that's being called. You can see it is very simplistic. We just have a name and an email field and then an add record function and then our response. So when we run this, we can go ahead and do a test run here in Xano just so you can see exactly what's going on. So I will go ahead and use the same information as before. And when we run this, you can see our response contains that record ID, the name, and the email. So this is what's being sent back to our Webflow custom code as a response. And we're taking this ID and storing it in local storage. And then we are being redirected to the success page which is using this Git API, which again is just slash Webflow and then takes that record ID after the slash Webflow. We have a single input with that Webflow ID. And then finally, it's nothing more than a Git record function to get that user record and return it. Okay, now let's say I want to add a new field to my form. I want to walk you through that just so you can kind of see what that implementation actually looks like. So in Webflow, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new form label. 
and we're going to call this password. And then I'm going to add a new text input. And we're just going to name this one password. And that is our whole field. We'll go ahead and check and make sure the ID is correct, which it is. So now we can go into our custom code and you can see all I really have to do here is just copy and paste one of these other fields and I can change the names and we will be all set. So we have our email. We will go ahead and change this to password and then we will also change it over here. So this knows to actually find the form field labeled password. And then we need to do one more thing. Uh, because the way our submit button tracking, so the way our code actually finds the submit button works, what we're doing is we're looking through the code of the page and we're looking for every single element that is of type input. And those are basically inside of a numerically indexed array. And we give this the last input, which is going to always be our submit button. So because we've added a new input, I just need to increase this number by one. And now I can save this and we can see in Xano, we have a password field in our database table and in our API, we have our password input. So now we can go ahead and just publish our changes and we can take a look inside our published site and try it out. So on our published site, we can go ahead and fill out our form fields and click submit. And you can see our success page is exactly the same. We did not add the field to this page, but we can go into Xano and we can take a look at our database table. And you can see there is our new password field, which is populating. If we wanted to add this new field to our success page, all I'm going to do is give myself a new paragraph and give it an ID of password. And then we can go into our custom code. And again, all I'm going to do is copy and paste what we already have here. So we need a new variable for our password element. And then finally, we need to actually populate this new element. So we will just again change these to password. And we'll click save. And now we can publish this. And we'll go back and we will try it out one more time. We'll say my name is Chris. My email is chris at email.com and my password is new password. And when we click submit on the next page, you can see there is our new password. It's very simple. The Xano JavaScript SDK is incredibly powerful. I definitely recommend diving into this documentation. We also have a folder full of examples here that you can follow to get you started. And we will have more content on how to utilize this SDK with Webflow and other front-end platforms in the near future. I really appreciate you taking some time to watch this video and I really hope it helped. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. You can also visit us via support chat inside Xano or on the Xano community. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.